In this uh, short demonstration we're going to take a look at the colour lookup node. I'm going to start by applying the colour lookup node to um, to this uh, to, the, to this image. Um, for those of you that have um, that have worked in After Effects, you'll probably uh, regard this as a very similar tool to uh, to the Curves editor, um, and in many ways it is very similar. So essentially, we have these five properties. Um, we have the master, which affects the entire image. Then we are able to affect the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha channel separately, and we do it using this curve. So essentially, this is a bar between the shadows and the highlights. The midtones being in the center here, we can lower the midtones going in this direction. We can raise the midtones going in that direction. We can um, we can we can reduce the highlights. We can increase the highlights. We can reduce the shadows. We can increase the shadows by moving these various points. Obviously, there's no point in the center yet, but we could affect that by um, we we could we could affect that by adding a point. So to demonstrate this, if I just select my um, Select my master control. You can see that by pulling to this side, I darken the um, darken the shadows, the darkest areas of the image. Um, by raising it up, I brighten the dark darkest areas of the image. Um, over across in the in the highlights, if I move this across, then I brighten the highlights. If I move it down, I darken the highlights without affecting the shadows or the midtones. If I want to come into the center. I can, uh, I, th I believe it's Control Alt click, and that adds a point into the center. Now I can actually pull down on the on the on the midtones, and again you can see that the darkest areas and the brightest areas are clamped. So I can brighten up the midtones without affecting the darks or the shadows. You can see there that irrespective of where I put my cursor, it's only moving on a on a vertical plane. If I release and now go horizontally, it'll it'll only go on a horizontal plane. So it'll only go in one in one direction at any one time. However, again, if I hold down Control and uh, Control and Alt, now I can control it in a much more intuitive way. So I can bring this down, for example, into um, into this range. Maybe add another point just there, and take that up into that range. And I can I can execute something which is very similar to sort of a, a high contrast curve. Oops. I'm just going to select that and reset it to put it back to its original state. And I can perform very similar operations on uh, different parts of the image. So, for example, if I wanted to cool this image off, uh, I could maybe uh, I could maybe come into the into the into the red channel, um, add a point in the mid tones, and just add introduce some cyan tone tonality into the mid tones obviously going in the other direction is going to warm the image so I could I could maybe do that and maybe come to my blue channel again add a add a point and and lift that up a little bit like so so if we look at the if we look at the before and after we can see the effect of cooling that image There's a number of ways to um, to reset the the thing. We can we can go through individual our individual channels and reset them individually like that, or we can hit this button here, which basically creates sets the uh, sets the effect back to its default state. Because I've made quite a few changes, I'm going to hit this and send it all back to its default state. Because I just want to actually now sort of focus on these vertical bars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again I'm just going to select my node and I'm just going to move around the uh, hold down control and move around the image. This is a bit like a selection tool, and essentially what the um, what the vertical bars are, are showing me are the um, are the red, green, and blue values underneath the cursor at any given time, which is why they're moving around as I move around this image. So the red, green, and blue. Uh, values are, are stated. So let's say for example that I wanted to perform a color correction on the skin tones, a very precise color correction on the skin tones. Then what I could do is I could come into this area here and find a good area of skin uh, and then make that as a um, let's say I'll down the control and shift. I will need my uh, my overlay view on and make that selection. 
So I've made a selection now and I've averaged in a range of, of skin tones in this area. So what this is showing me now are the blue, the green and the red uh, the, uh, pixel values in, that are averaged out in that particular area. So what that would mean now, for example, is that I, if I wanted to sort of add some red tones and warm that area, I could come into my red, um, in, into my red channel, and I could apply a, a point directly on that red area. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit tricky when you're right on the point like that. Now that, now that point is directly over the red areas. So it's easy now for me to just to raise that up and raise the tones. Let me just do that again because I think I disturbed the uh, I disturbed the blue values while I was d while I was doing that. So this was my this is this was my area. So on my red, there we go. So now I can raise that up now, and I'm only affecting the red tonality. Okay, so let's reset that and demonstrate it using something slightly different. Let's say that I wanted to affect these these green images. Let's say that I want to make them very intense. Then what I could do is I could do a color selection based on uh, based on these green tones. Maybe just use my my marquee to get an average there. I can see exactly where my green tonality is there. Choose my green channel. Apply a point. And now I can raise that up, and it's going to affect those uh, those green those green tones very strongly, make them very vibrant, and so on. So that's how we would use these vertical lines to sort of pinpoint a color, and then perform a very a very specific color operation based on the on the pixels that are within that range. Okay, one other good feature. I'm just actually going to reset this this node. Uh, one other good feature that's been introduced fairly recently into the Color Lookup node is the source and target, and this reflects the fact that sometimes we need to um, we need to color match based on uh, very precise pixels in one um, in one side of a composite and match those to another. So just to demonstrate this, I've set up this little test rig, um, which is this little graphic here, and my objective here is going to be basically to um, to match this yellow area to the background. This could quite easily be a very specific um, colour on a on a jacket of a character, for example, that I wanted to match onto uh, onto similar pixels on a, on, a, on a different layer. So to do that, we would use the source and the target controls. Again, this is a, 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 a pipette operated uh, system. So I'll just apply my my colour lookup node to this particular um, data stream. Which is going to give me this, and I'm going to select my uh, my color picker on my source, and I'm going to just draw a marquee in the um, in this yellow area. And you can see that I've now got that picked, and my red, green, and blue values are also reflecting that. So I'll turn that uh, off to lock it now, and I'm now going to make a similar selection on my on my target area, and pick up some purple range, lock that off. And I can now just simply select the RGB, and we can see what that does. If we uh, if we select our nodes, we can see that what what's actually happened is that Nuke has actually dynamically applied these color values straight onto the straight onto the curves across all of the channels. Now you can see it's a little bit haywire in places. It's coming, but it's coming. You know, we've got some quite extreme uh, extreme curves. But what it's essentially done is it's matched that area. Now we have got this uh, little bit of an, an outline on there. Um, I won't address that in this particular exercise. It's basically as a result of uh, of this being an, an unpre-multiplied image, and there is clearly a need to use the pre-multiplied uh, option in order to uh, in order to neutralize that. But I'll leave that for another day. That's an example of how we would use the color lookup, uh, the source and target tools to basically pick a color from one image and apply it to another. Okay, so let's have a look at how we could actually apply this in practice. So let's just hook up to these uh, to these two images. So we've got this uh, we've got this image which is really badly uh, badly coloured, 
Um, and let's say, for example, we've got this other image here that's a lot nicer in terms of its tonality. And let's say that the DLP wants us to kind of match the tonality of this image uh, of the clouds onto the clouds of this particular image, so that we've got a, an, a, a much nicer contrast between the between the the, uh, the 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 ground and the and the clouds. So let's look at how we might apply this. So we'll put a color lookup into the into the layer that we want to affect. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a slightly different configuration of the um, of the viewer. So I've got three pipes coming into the viewer so that we can see the um, we can see the the before shot, we can see the target which is our our image uh, that we want to take our colors from and then we can see the composite which is uh, which is pipe 3. Okay. So our first thing is we're going to want to get our color correct node up and we're going to want to select the colors that we want to affect. In this case, uh, well we can select we can select them all. Um, we want to choose our source. So we'll start with the midtones. Now it's really important that you are very precise and very sort of consistent about the way that you apply your uh, uh, that you apply your ranges. Now I'm going for this range here, which is kind of like a sort of very much a mid tone as I see it in this particular image, um, and I'll be going for a similar kind of value, sort of this kind of area in the target image. So I'll make my initial selection, Control and Shift to draw out a marquee for that particular area. And there's my selection and then I'm going to make my selection on my target and I'm going to draw a similar marquee in that and get a similar kind of range okay now once I've done that I can choose set RGB and if we come over to our composite image now we can see that we've applied the those the really nice uh, tones from the uh, from the target uh, from from the target uh, clouds, and we've applied we've applied those to our source, and we've immediately immediately got a really nice contrast between our clouds and our and our ground. And we can actually go a little bit further than this. So, for example, we can come back to our uh, our target, and let's say that we want to pick up the highlights as well. So let's uh, let's come into this area, some nice bright areas here. So again, I'll make another selection, and I'll try and marquee select a nice bright area of that image. And then I'm going to come over and try and get a similar, similar range. Let's go for uh, let's go for that little area there. there and set the RGB again and again now if we come back to our our composite we can again see that now not only have we got the midtones from our from our uh, from our target and applied those to our source but we've also got the highlights as well so you can see there how we would use this color lookup node and particularly the source and target properties within the color lookup node you could see how we would use those to basically sort of append the colors and actually create and match the colors from one image onto the onto the other one so that's an example of how we would use the color lookup in practice